In this update, we're going to be giving you a preliminary forecast on the rare solar eclipse that will be coming up on April the 8th because the next one is not until 2045, but a more concerning event looks to unfold as we head into Monday and Tuesday with a widespread severe weather event. So here's the setup this morning for your Friday, March the 29th on the water vapor imagery. We've been dealing with this low pressure center that's been racing up the eastern seaboard that left all the heavier rains now it's up into new england winding itself down still could be seeing some scattered showers uh later on into the afternoon time frame but more concerning is the low pressure center that's starting to get its act together off the west coast and that's not going anywhere anytime soon in fact it's going to take its sweet time and dive southward over the coming days and it's not actually going to eject eastbound until monday and but when it does it's going to tap into a very warm sector across the southern and central plains highlighted across the ohio valley and could set the stage for a Monday and Tuesday widespread severe weather event. So I appreciate all my subscribers out there. If you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel and I would love to reach 250,000 subscribers by the end of April. And you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily breakdowns. So. Here's the setup over the next couple of days. So across the middle of the country, that East Coast storm is moving offshore and you know leaving behind some clearer skies, especially for this area across the south. That's going to be you know really warming these temperatures in a big way. You're going to be experiencing some actually really nice conditions, widespread 70s, if not 80s, especially down there towards Texas. Those warmer conditions left all the way up into Kansas, all the way through the Ohio Valley into the southeast. There's where the cold air is out west, complements where that low pressure center. They're going to be inundated with some more heavy rains across that region, but some cooler conditions as well as we'll be watching this significant trough that continues to dig. And this is actually Sunday night. This is where we're at, folks. You see where it's at today and you see where it's at going to be on Sunday night. It's still hanging off the southern coast of California, but it's going to start to eject. And But when it does, that's when we could set the stage for some severe storms, especially as we head into Monday night. So here's the setup for Sunday. So you know, going into Sunday, we're going to be seeing those warmer conditions right across this area of really clear skies. There's not a drop of rainfall in sight over the coming days, but there's the warm front is going to be draped across Missouri, back into Illinois, as well as Indiana and Ohio. These actually could be some marginally severe storms heading into Sunday and some very heavy rainfall as well. But here's the low pressure, it right, right off the Southern California coast. That is the more concerning setup as you'll be dealing with some snow showers across those areas into Wyoming and back into South Dakota, and then more heavier snow as you, sh you know, shift into uh, Montana. But going forward, look at the breakdown for the rain estimates over between now and Monday morning. So between now and Monday morning, that area where you see all the red and the orange, those are clear skies, right? The atmosphere is going to be very warm aloft too as that system will be coming in for for you know for monday but before that you've got all the rains that will be inundating the west coast for today saturday and even heading to sunday so some of these rains could even be some flooding rains especially as you shift further south into southern california there's the rain as it shifts into the four corners region would likely include further up into the Dakotas. Some of this could be in the form of snow, but there's where the warm front stalls on your Sunday. And that could set the stage for about a one to three inch rainfall estimates across this region. And some of these could be on the marginally severe side heading into Sunday afternoon. But the main setup is Monday. So as this trough ejection starts to eject out, you know, shifting off into the southern plains, it's going to be tapping into that warm sector, right, that I showed you, that warm sector that's basically draped across this region. And that's concerning because it's got plenty of time. It's fueling, basically fueling the atmosphere with all that warmth as well as it as the Gulf of Mexico also has plenty of time to recoup itself and by the time that energy 
that upper level of uh, that uh, trough hits that air mass, this is like a juice box, folks. I mean, right here across this region through Texas, through Oklahoma, would include eastern portions of Kansas, through Missouri, and back through the where the warm front is, draped across Illinois, through Indiana, as well as Ohio. And this is the region within the warm sector that we're definitely concerned about severe storms heading into uh, Monday and your Tuesday time frame, because this look at the water vapor transport index. I mean, this is prime time setups for severe storms. As we got a cold front coming in off west, we got a we got an active dry line off in West Texas. There's where the low pressure center would likely be by the time we head into Monday afternoon. Right there, highlighted across western Kansas, the Texas Panhandle, and right there to the southeast side of there. That's where we could be seeing numerous thunderstorms start start to explode within the region as we'll have a lot of lift coming in out wet coming in off the out west and that could set the stage for all three modes of severe storms and the update uh, from the storm prediction center has reflected that in fact this is the most significant uh, uh, upgrade they've seen so far this year. They haven't put out an enhanced risk on a day four extended outlook, but now this is definitely uh, the first one of the season. And we've been talking about this, looking at a more, a more of a massive storm starting to form, and this is starting to come to fruition, folks, unfortunately. So now they've actually expanded this as we head into Monday. So it would include all the way down into the Austin region, Waco, down here into Abilene, as well as into the Dallas Fort Worth area of the Wichita Falls. Does include all those areas into Oklahoma, Wichita, Kansas, but especially as you head into Tulsa, and it gets could be pretty nasty up here in Springfield and St. Louis. And then right where the warm front is, right? Right where the warm front kind of stalls, that's where we could look more severe storms into Illinois, back into Ohio, and that would continue to shift eastbound as we head into Tuesday. So likely the severe weather threat would shift further east, and that would include where the warm front is stalled across this region, all the way into Pittsburgh, back into the DC region, even further south into uh, West Virginia, back in through K Kentucky, into Tennessee, and then further south into Birmingham. So if you get further south than that, I think we're going to have to be dealing with more capping concerns. But here's the setup on the learning model. And this is definitely concerning because they've definitely upped the ante and we could be looking at a possible moderate upgrade by the time we get closer to this event. And right around this bullseye where the uh, triple point is, Right where the right where the warm front with the cold front leaves and that low pressure center will be continue to shift off to northeast. The concerning element right down here into eastern portions of Oklahoma, especially into Arkansas, into Missouri. That is the bullseye area, if you will, and that could extend even further north into portions of Illinois, and then that would shift off into the eastern seaboard, likely with more severe storms setting up shop across Pennsylvania, through West Virginia, all the way through the Carolinas, and extending further south into uh, portions of Georgia. Now, the problem is once you get further south, I do feel, because you're away from that cold front and the warm front, you're going to be dealing with more capping concerns. So I think these storms are probably going to be uh, less concerning, if you will, and they're not going to be as severe as you're going to be seeing further north. But yeah, it could be setting up to setting the stage for a big time severe weather threat heading into Monday night as it lights up like a Christmas tree as we head into Monday night. Could be seeing supercell thunderstorms really elongated around this boundary ahead of the cold front all the way through north and central Texas. This could even extend farther into south Texas. And then all pretty much most of Oklahoma into southeastern Kansas through Missouri and back through where the warm front is through Illinois and all the way to the DC region. And this would continue to shift off to the east as we head into your Tuesday would likely include those areas in Tennessee, through Kentucky, and back through West Virginia. You could see some storms further south, but again, I feel the cap, the cap's gonna be a lot more pronounced the further south you go. So I'm not really concerned about that sector. I'm definitely concerned those areas along the warm front and right where the low pressure is into Missouri, into Arkansas, within 
with this particular event as well as into southeastern uh, Kansas. But look what happens on Wednesday. <laughs> Folks, that low pressure center continues to race off into the eastern seaboard where you got rain yesterday. You're going to get more rain uh, as you head into Wednesday. But look, it's actually going to be possibly cold enough. <laughs> yeah, we're talking April 3rd, folks. The snow across this region into Vermont and New Hampshire and, and a good portion of Maine as well as the low pressure center will wind itself out and ringing out some snow showers in the northern portions of Michigan by then. If you look at the breakdown of where the snow front is, you got the storm system coming off from the northwest, right? So you got the snow showers inundating the interior mountain regions, and there's a swath that could include those areas into the Dakotas through portions of Minnesota. But then you have the backside event with that low pressure center winding it on the backside could leave a couple of inches in its wake in the northern uh, Michigan, as well as upstate New York. And some of these totals could be some hefty totals, especially as you get into Vermont and New Hampshire and more snow for Maine just gets crushed again. Further north you live and into Caribou could actually maybe pick up a foot of snow from this particular setup. Probably Massachusetts is on the tail end of that of a mixed variety down further south and especially down there in Connecticut, probably just a mixed bag as it's mainly going to be rain. But let's talk about this solar eclipse because once that moves out on the third, right? So we have these systems. We're going into April. We typically it's a very active month, not only for severe weather, but just rain in general, right? Because we have these cold air, warm air, and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing. But ironically, where all the rain has been unfolding for a good part of March, we're actually going to be seeing ridging start to build across the east. That is going to set the stage for uh, some drying out period, finally, for those areas into the northeast. But we are going to be seeing another trough building out west, cooler conditions, almost like a deja vu type setup. And it looks to be active in that same time frame within that zone. Here's March 5th through the 11th of a rainy period and more of an unsettled period closer you are to that ridging aspect up there into the northeast into new england you are going to be starting to dry out but the main event is april the 8th right what's it going to be like so this is very preliminary of course this we're about 11 days out but right now the ensemble members aren't looking very favorable folks i mean this is your overall average mean precipitation as we head into that noon time frame on april the 8th on the european the eps ensemble guidance has a favorable swath of possible precipitation across the zones in texas right where the solar eclipse would start to come uh, taking shape around that noon time sw swinging up through one o'clock and all the way through three so yeah We've got totality here for about three or four minutes. And so it's going to start around noon, end about three. But yeah, that's the more concerning setup. We could have uh, some possibilities of rain in the picture through Texas, through Arkansas, as well as in Illinois and Indiana. But the closer you get to that ridge, the more favorable are you have a little bit more clearer skies once you get up into upstate New York and the northern Vermont and into uh, New Hampshire, especially in there into Maine. It could actually be some clearer skies. If you look at the overall GFS, the G GFS guidance as well kind of implies the same thing. So if you live down there in Texas into Arkansas, likely into southern Illinois, into Indiana, through Ohio, you're going to have a probably a harder time. You're going to be timing this system out as it looks to have rain in the picture over that so just could obviously you know hinder the viewing of that solar eclipse and right now the cloud cover too so not only the rain even the clouds this is the ensemble guidance again this is 11 days out this could change but the trend is getting getting more signs that it could see you be wet it could also be cloudy especially the further south you live in texas look 77 percent chance it could be cloudy as of right now through texas through portions of arkansas and then less cloudy as you shift further north closer to that ridge right through illinois into ohio and as you get further into upstate new york those clouds start to at least the percentages start to decrease so yeah if don't want you don't want to miss this one because it's going to be a while before the next one so the next one is not actually until august the 12th 
2045. So it's a ways away. That'd be 21 years, folks. But that's also another total solar eclipse. And with that one, it's going to be in August. So you have a little bit more favorability of probably being warmer, drier, because it's the middle of the summer, right? This is April. Typically, showers and thunderstorms would encompass a good part of the country. But nonetheless, here is the path of that one through Northern California, through Colorado, down through, th down through the Oklahoma region, all the way into the Southeast, would go into Florida by then on your April, you know, August the 12th, 2045. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. I plan on going live on the severe weather threat on Monday, so definitely stay tuned for that. I'll be breaking down and fine details as this gets closer because it does look, at, look to be a significant event starting to build as we head into Monday and Tuesday. So catch me with the next update where I protect you before and after storm.